Thank you, Mr. President. This is a bill that I have bought, brought to this uh, body several years in a row now, and it's specifically designed to close the achievement gap between high-performing and low-performing groups of public school students. It is a very limited bill as a pilot project for Fayette and Jefferson County, with no more than one charter authorized each year by the local school district board and no more than one charter authorized each year by the Kentucky Public School Charter Commission. This bill, as it was related to um, dealing with the achievement gap, the achievement gap over the last few years has continued to get worse. And as the Senator from Fayette 13 talked about, the achievement gap in Fayette County is actually 42%. And for the benefit of those who don't understand what the achievement gap is, it's taking like that African American students, only 15% of them are proficient in math as opposed to 57% of white students. That's pretty unconscionable, Mr. President, and we have year after year passed this bill without getting a hearing on it in the House. And again, it's not the answer, not the end all, but it's another tool in the toolbox to allow them to address that issue. Some of the characteristics of charter schools, it is a public charter school that is tuition-free, non-home-based, non-sectarian, with no religious affiliation. As I've already alluded to, there are two authorizers, the local school board or the Kentucky Public Charter School Commission that is appointed by the governor. The charter school, when they apply to become one, they have to show that they are committed to at-risk students, special needs students, and students residing in an attendance area that has at least 50% free and reduced lunch. The Kentucky Board of Education is the one who will establish regulations and requirements to hold an authorizer accountable to remain an authorizer. They must follow nationally recognized principles and standards for charter school authorizing. And I also want to mention that charter management organizations that would be contracted with must be nonprofit. They must be nonprofit. And the governance, the charter school will operate as its own local education authority with full oversight from its own independent board of directors. The contracts may be renewed or revoked based on performance measures that are established during the authorization, uh, existing Kentucky Board of Education accountability measures, or terms of the charter contract. They are exempt from local and state board regulations, but they must adhere to existing health and safety, financial budget, and audit requirements, as well as state and federal laws, rules, and regulations regarding students with disabilities, limited English proficiency, and they must provide instructional time equivalent to state required instructional time. Teachers will be those that are certified, they will participate in the KTRS, or those that are, have bachelor's degree, exceptional work experience in the area which they are hired to teach and a passing score on the appropriate academic content assessment designated by the Education Professional Standards Board. Mr. President, these schools will be funded in exactly the same way that our public schools are funded. State and federal funds using the same formulas, allocation processes, and other schools in the school district. Federal categorical aid funds, disability generated federal and state aid, and local facility tax revenues in the same way as other public schools. The Public Charter Commission establishes a trust fund that is for receiving contributions to help aid in the charter schools. Again, the enrollees must reside in the attendance area. They must be free and reduced lunch who get priority registration for that. <laughs> and if there, uh, say there is a capacity of 500 students for this school and you have 600, that apply to be a part of the school and they fit all those requirements for priority registration that will be done by law.